say her name, say their names, Brianna Taylor. Happy Thursday. Today's guest is Patrick Weil. He's an actor, producer, and all around cool guy. No wait for him to show up here. You know how it goes. How's everyone's week been? I got a humanitarian award today, so that's pretty cool. Add it to my uh, sailor uniform. So I'm very happy about that. Um, yesterday was 11-11, so it's been a good week. Starting the uptick of more self-care. I did a breathwork session with Avi today. I'm going to bring him back on soon because I think we all need that. Um, but I can't get over how cool Bishop was last week. She's still such a powerful woman. Uh, let's see. If you have any questions, you can write in the comments for Patrick. He's done so much. I met him in Los Angeles. And, um, okay, here we go. Like my brads. Hello, welcome. Hey, Patrick. Hi. Got you. Okay. Hello. <laughs> and ta da! Oh, who is that? <laughs> it's me. Hi, Stina, Hi. live from New York. Yeah. You're at Long Island, Syosset, right? Merrick, but close. <laughs> Merrick, okay. Wow. How are you doing? We have the same color wall, it looks like. We do indeed. A royal blue for the for the royalty in the house. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, uh, so, so good. So what we met at a sound bath, right? We did. Mm -hmm. Several and years ago, it seems at this point. Five years ago, actually. It doesn't and seem like it. It seems like an eternity with this year in particular. But. Yeah, right. And uh, you were going to sound baths a while before I met you there, right? No, no, oh. um, probably, oh, probably about, um, I was a virgin kind of at that point, I suppose, compared to nowadays. Oh, you've but, been, uh, been to tons, yeah. Yeah, let me get up here a little closer. Hi, now Fred, welcome. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, uh, I love the sound bath. We'll get back to the sound bath, but I was, I, it was a pleasure to meet sure. you there. That energy is, and Guy is fabulous. Yeah, I mean, it's been difficult because there's, there's not really been um, any sound baths to speak of um, because of the COVID. I mean, uh, it's, they're doing them outside in Malibu, you know, but it's a bit of a trek from where I live. And it's just, you know, you go to a sound bath and you get all zoned out. The last thing you want to do is d drive in kind of a, you know, mountainous terrain, I'll put it that way. And yeah. it's, uh, you know, so it's a little bit of a, a burden to go out there, but... Um, you yeah, because you have to ground before. We used to go out to eat after to ground ourselves. Right. Go home, but. Right. It looks like we have matching studios here. <laughs> yeah, the chair and everything. <laughs> I'm actually using my old phone because it stands up better. Really? It looks good. Yeah, my, I wouldn't even know. My new, my new one's a little, little oh. narrow, and it's kind of I don't know. It's just this one's kind of a wide one, so it. They, actually, the old one, I like it better than the new one, to tell you the truth. Oh, so you're going to return it? But it's a, it's a technology thing. You got good so lighting, doesn't have... whatever is going on yeah, over there. Yeah, well, I have, I have, uh, I'm so used to Zoom calls, and and so I have it set up for that, mostly. I had to nice. do a little improvising to get the phone to be in the right spot, but right. not quite at camera level. It should be like here, maybe. I don't know. Da, da, da. That's okay. <laughs> For you, anything, my love. Oh, thank you, Patrick. So, darling. Uh, darling, yes. Well, so, so, um, go ahead. Interview I, me. I'm ready. I, uh, I knew you'd be ready, P. So, <laughs> we, I always go back to the beginning of time. When you were younger, did you know you wanted to act and produce? No. No. I, 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 kind of was kind of shoved into it by my mother and because she was like this one of these Hollywood mom kind of moms and I grew up here in LA and in, in the west side of LA which is 
really Beverly Hills and Santa Monica and all that. So, um, in, you know, I hate to date myself, but I, let's just put it to you this way. I was alive when JFK was president. <laughs> so to give you an idea. That's so, cool. <laughs> so, yeah, my mom would have me audition for like the Brady Bunch and stuff like that, but, but not principal jobs, just background or, or just like small, little small parts, like one of the kids in the neighborhood kind of thing. So uh, I was exposed to it early. And then my dad um, was medical director of MGM Studios. Cool. And, and which is now Sony. So um, he, in those days, they used to have like their own like hospital uh, in on the, on the lot because of just the nature of, the, of what it was in those days. So um, it was, he had like a, oh, I don't know, maybe 10, 10 people in a department that just, you know, so he would, they would have medics on all the sets and everything. And, uh, and I spent a lot of my youth, um, on those sets and I was, you know, I would sit on Jimmy Stewart's lap and things like that. And Jack right. Lemon, all the old, old classic actors, you know, and I was just a little kid and I didn't really, <clears throat> I just thought it was part of my <clears throat> world and it was. It was for a long time, and uh, so yeah, it was. Um, it was a really interesting experience growing up like that because I wasn't in the f industry, but I was around the industry. I guess. Sorry. sorry. It's better because it's uh, it's less pressure in a way, you know. Yeah, but my my love was always airplanes. I wanted to be. It was always funny because I mean, my cousin was laughing at me the other day because. Yeah, you didn't want to fly the planes. You wanted to own the airline, didn't you? Yeah, I did. And um, and I never got into the I, – I got a pilot's license, but it wasn't like – I was rather kind of a person that said, I'd rather hire somebody to do that, you know, because it's sort of monotonous. So I um, started working in the airline industry. I actually kind of uh, – in those days, they didn't have background checks or anything. They didn't, they didn't have computers or anything and uh, I was 16 and, and I told I lied and I said I was 18 I could get a job at the LAX airport yeah. being a baggage handler and uh, until they found me out one day I guess but uh, anyway um, and then I, and I, I when I was when I was 18 I was allowed to actually work around the airplanes I, I uh, went to work for uh, an airline in Burbank and um, I was baggage handler there Nice. And uh, so I started the career in that respect, just kind of from the ground up, working my way through the system up to like being a CEO of an airline just uh, back in 2006. So you, so you've done, you've done everything in that industry and you realized that you just wanted to be like the umbrella of it in a way. Well, what happened is the, uh, the um, global uh, financial crisis happened. And uh, I wound up out of a job and, and, you know, they don't have a lot of vacancies for CEOs of airlines. You know? So basically um, I, and I was living, I was, it was an odd thing. I was living in Miami, but I was commuting to New Zealand because my, my air, the company I was running, it was in New Zealand. So it was, um, it was exactly a kind of awkward place to be in between. Yeah, I've never heard of that combination. <laughs> and um, what happened is, sorry. No, enjoy, I'm, enjoy like, yourself. Have a drink. Just chewing ice here. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just nervous because I'm on the Stina show, man. And it's like, God, I'm like, ooh, I got stage fright. You know? Got to like, cool oh, off. <laughs> I was in the green room earlier, you know, kind of like just getting things, you know, get myself motivated. <laughs> I'm so, did I provide enough for you on your uh, your roster over there? <laughs> oh, my roster! Yes, you did. I love the Stina show. I, I watch it religiously every week. Oh, thank you. On Thursday nights, man, it, you, you gotta get you gotta get this on the air. You got it. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Producer. Uh, Hollywood, Hollywood producer. Hollywood, yeah. So thank like Jim back. You know, it's funny. Like Mr. Howe, I mean, those are the kind of guys I knew because my dad knew them. So I, I spent a lot of time mimicking a lot of these people. 
you know, and doing voices and all kinds of things, cartoons, and you know, all that kind of stuff. My mom said you're a natural. She said Patrick is a natural. Oh, thank Thanks, you mom. very much. <laughs> Namaste, namaste. <laughs> and um, so to answer your question, uh, no, I always liked uh, the, that industry. And then 2006 happened and I found myself out of a job. And out of, you know, and I was like, well, do I go back to Miami or maybe I should go to L.A.? So I was kind of in between going from New Zealand to L.A. And I, in 2007, and I was, um, you know, I always call people and say, hey, I'm in L.A., blah, 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 you know, try to, you know, see people I didn't see in years and whatever. And <clears throat> somebody said, oh, um, my friend's doing a concert over at Roxy, and why don't you come and da, 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 we'll hook you up. So I went, and my friend played, and it was uh, some kind of a um, a uh, benefit. So it was a private event. You know, it wasn't general public. And there was a lot of celebrities there, you know, because it was a celebrity auction for this or that, guitars or something. Anyway, so I went to that, and I was um, – it was after the show, and I was doing, you know, the meet and greet with, the, with the, my friend who was the singer. She was there. And – there was a line of people there and I was like, Oh, I need to get a picture of this. So um, I turned to this girl and she was just kind of like, you know, kind of run down wore like a German military coat, you know, glasses and with a, with a beanie. And I'm like, I was like, okay, whatever. It's like just Hollywood, you know? So um, I was like, I was telling my friend, I go, should this girl, she, she goes, Oh yeah, this girl, take your picture. She's, she's trustworthy. Whatever. I said, okay. And um, so anyway, I went through, you know, took a picture, meet and greet, haha, wonderful, wonderful. And um, my friend, the singer, uh, E.G. Daly is her name. She's nice. pretty well known here in L.A. Yeah. Um, yeah, she was, um, she was um, uh, uh, Pee Wee Herman's girlfriend in uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. <laughs> nice. Actually. And then she was in the Valley Girl. You know, she was one of the Valley Girls. She's a very interesting voice, right? Yeah, and then she wound up being the voice of Tommy Pickles, and she made her fortune doing that. I mean, a lot. She made, uh, I mean, she, she's she got the nicest house on the top of the Hollywood Hills because of Tommy Pickles. The Tommy Pickles, what a gig. That was it. I watched she was, it. I was there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she was kind of a BC level, you know, actress, and she was just kind of struggling, lived in an apartment, and, you know, down in the jungle of, of you know, around uh, uh, Rennie, Rennie Canyon down there. And, um, you know, just one of the Hollywood girls, you know, just kind of like, oh, yeah, everybody knew E.G. Yada, yada. But so I was asking her, well, how did you get that role? And she goes, well, I saw this this ad in Craigslist for an audition. And I, she, I said, well, I'll just go down there and wing it, you know. And she didn't really have any like, cartoon voice experience or anything. And she, they gave her this, you got to play this, you know, little infant boy. And she goes, oh, okay. So she... Um, and I'll shorten that story. My story is more important, but yeah, yes. well, this is good. But <laughs> but yeah, so she she got it, got the job, and she wound up making you know millions and millions of dollars because she was smart. She and she got uh, a piece of the merchandising, like all the toys and all that. Nice. That's where she got her big money from. That so it was really inspiring to me, and not just not as an actor, but I was. I wanted to get in that business doing VO stuff and cartoons and all. I, I thought I could do very well. Um, you know, I could do the, uh, you know, Martian from uh, <laughs> Bugs Bunny. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? It's like, like stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, and I, and I could do all kinds of Southerners and oh, we talk like I'm from England, you know what I mean? And, you know, it's so the mimicry was like, it was always a hobby, but I never pursued it. And anyway, so to move forward back in 2007. Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, that was her concert. So she, she sings and does it like once in a while. She does benefits and stuff. So anyway, her friend was there and um, she was kind of laughing because she goes, your friend's kind of cute. And they're talking about me. And I, okay. Um, and I was like, oh, God, I don't want to get hooked up with some weird chick you know, or something, you know? So it was like, <laughs> and, and she laughed at me and she goes, you know who that is? And I go, no, should I? And she goes, yeah, it's Drew Barrymore. 
Wow. Again. So I was like, ooh, oh, sorry. I'm like, oh, God. I Gee, love that, her I so much. Well, I hadn't. You know, it's like I'm not the kind of person that would go, other than knowing E.T. and some of the things like that, I wouldn't have gone and seen, unless I saw him late night or something, I wouldn't necessarily be a fan, right? Yeah. And, um, but then, um, you yeah, know, she was very sweet and nice, and she goes, you know, we were, we were chit-chatting a little bit, and she goes, oh, you should, you should be an actor. You'd be really good at it. Wow. You know, it's like, excuse me? Yeah. So, anyway, I went back to Florida after that. I gave her my business card because I was a dope. I said, like, oh, if you're in New Zealand, give me a call. You know, like, so, suck like an idiot, you know, typical goof. <laughs> yeah, we, and, have, we all go down. And, down. Uh, <laughs> and lo and behold, um, one day about three months later, I get this, sorry, I'm just a little hoarse right now. It's a little dry out here. It's it is dry. here too, actually. I thought it rained yesterday. It did, but it's still dry for some reason. I mean, like, Winter, our, our winter bodies. <laughs> Are the trees all dying out? Yeah. Okay, that's why. It makes sense. So I know Long I know New York really well. I know Long Island really well. I've had a couple of uh romantic interests in your part of the world. Nice. And yeah. And so I know the ground very well, especially like Melville and Syosset and Glen Cove and oh, all Suff those, Suffolk all those and hoods. North Shore Suffolk, nice. Yeah, yeah. A couple of South Shore ones here and there, Levittown. Well, I'm, I'm Merrick. I don't know. that. I know where Merrick is. Syosset's right by you. Not too far. Huntington? Huntington's close, yeah. West Huntington. Huntington Station. There you go. That's my favorite place to hang out about three in the morning. Oh, well, I don't, yeah. Well, it's, it's waiting for you. <laughs> so go Just back. So what, what happened with Drew Barrymore? Oh, okay, so anyway... <laughs> Uh, so about three months later, I get this phone call I'm back in Florida by then. And I'm just sitting here going, what am I going to do with my life? Because everything's, in, in, you know, it's kind of like now, same kind of thing. And a little bit different, different. Because um, now I'm okay. But like then it was like, oh, what am I going to do? I'm like, I was living at the beach in, in the Miami area. And um, Deerfield Beach, I don't know if you, your viewers know where that is. But um, it's a nice kind of like California, remind me of home. So I lived there for about 20 years. Wow. And uh, yeah, and that was, that's how I knew New York because there was a lot of New Yorkers, especially in, in that area. So right. you kind of had a, a Long Island uh, long list. I've been to Miami a few times, yeah. Yeah. It, it's just easy to, to fly down, yeah. Right. There's like a flight every hour and it's like, you know, get the right deal. It could be like 50 bucks or something. So anyway. Um, so I go up and I was in New York a lot. I just, cause I was in the industry too. So I still had like free travel privileges. I had a, so I had this card off the show, I'll have to find it here, but, uh, it was unlimited free travel on Delta airlines card. Wow. Because I was the CEO of an airline at the time, even though I was not, the airline was going like that. I hung on to that card till it expired. So I was all over the place. I was, <laughs> it was all over the world. And, um, so anyway, um, so I get this phone call like at two in the morning. I'm fighting with my girlfriend. She's been living with me all these years. And, uh, so um, I get this phone call like three in the morning. And I go, and I go hello? And I go, because it came up like private number. Like, you know, celebrities don't. You won't see their, no. their number flash up on the, on the caller ID. So um, it's a private number. And I was like, oh, God, somebody's calling me to sell me a Warranty or something. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I get I get this voice. She goes, "Hello." I go, "Hello," and <clears throat> and it's like, "Is this Patrick?" And I go, "Yeah." <laughs> Who's this? Are you drunk? It's at three in the morning. In right. the, it's east, right? But out here, it was only. She used to live out here before she went off. She went back to Manhattan now, but. Um, in those days, she was sort of still living in Beverly Hills area. So, um, anyway, she didn't know the time. So, anyway, right, right, right. long story short. So, um, long story short, she goes, yeah, I, I saw your, I found your card. I was just wearing this jacket. And I, I don't know who it was, but I remember something about an airline. Uh, I just thought I'd give you a call because I remember you, and I thought you were really cool. Aww. And you would, and she goes, and then, I don't know what the conversation, just, it was just because she found the card in her jacket. 
And we just started getting into a conversation about this and everything. I think I mentioned I grew up in L.A. and around where she grew up in L.A. And I knew I know her brother, like John Barrymore, not yeah. their half half brother. Yeah. And through through like rock and roll business, because I used to be like a roadie for for heavy metal bands back in the 80s. Oh, cool. Um, and that was and that included um, Rat and uh, a little bit with um, uh, Metallica when they were in LA and then they moved to San Francisco. Uh, so this is like 1982, 83. I was one of these long haired kids. So in those days it was like, you know, like, uh, what's the guy, Petro. Bob Ross. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Damn freaking fro. I mean, my, I mean, I'm like doing the Clooney thing nowadays, but man, it was like, um, yeah, I was one of those characters. And uh, we would go, I was just one of these guys who posted our flyers on people's windshields. And then the minute we walked down the street, they were all on the ground and somebody else's flyer. It was one of those kind of things. Yeah. It was the Battle of the Bands years, especially in the early 80s. So, cool. um, yeah, so we got into com the conversation. She goes, well, when you come back out here, let's have lunch sometime. Aww. And I, I, so I was on the plane like the next day. I was like, are you fucking kidding? Yeah. Was, I'm going. <laughs> yeah. Opportunity. And I could fly free. I could fly free then. So I was like, yeah, um, yeah, of course. I'm gonna. I was there the next day. And I, and I, and I called her office and, uh, and um, yeah, I had, it's just, she said, uh, so we met out, you know, at, uh, where the dialogue cafe is in West Hollywood. Yes. Yeah. Right there. So I, she met me there. It was really coffee, I guess. And uh, <clears throat> so we, we got together and had coffee and, you know, she had like one of her people with her just because she didn't want yeah, to you know, well, create some, I'm some nut something, you know, I am, but <laughs> that's beside the point. But uh, so, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, yeah. um, so we were just chit-chatting and she goes, listen, I have a friend that she has a show, major show and da 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 And she says, I'm, I'm going to, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you, you should go to this place called Central Casting. And you sign up there. And so, because, you know, I can't really do it's her show, and uh, but I will tell her to get, you know, once you get in and see if you like it first and see if you can even handle it because a lot of people, <laughs> they're gone the next day. Wow. Um, so she said, yeah, go do that for a couple of weeks then call me back and then I'll call my friend Jennifer Love Hewitt and I will make sure you're on that show for, for its whole run every day for like three years wow or every day it was work other than hiatus but yeah so or any day so i was a regular uh extra on the the ghost whisper and through that i earned my um my uh sag card my sag credits yeah joint sag and i'm a i'm a happy humble <laughs> member to this day 10 years 12 years now Wow. And and so that gave me my break in as far as joining the union. And in those days it was it was a lot cheaper than it is now. It's like five thousand, I think, to join. Is it? Um, I is thought it was it? I think it was three, but Is it three? Okay. I, I somebody told me it was five. It so, could have got, I mean it was fifteen when I joined and that was two Are you weeks still are you still a board member? Oh, I was never a board member. I was a delegate for two terms, but um okay. I'm not currently a delegate. Involved. But I, I, I always, I'm going to, I always run. I'm involved in uh, committees. Which oh, have good. Because I vote for you. You know that? I vote Thank for you. you. Thank you. Thank you. You're the only person I have voted for after this last round of stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, the last round, which I unfortunately lost. I mean, people like Nev Campbell were on the slate. What am I going to do? You know? But right. um, I, I would have voted for her if I wasn't on the slate. But, well, yeah. so, so what happened is, okay, so now I'm a union member. Yes. I'm just, let me, uh, just let me know if I, 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 I just, you know, you want to change the subject. So I, I want to hear that it's your show, not mine. So. Oh, yeah. No, I'm just flowing with you. It, you know, we could go anywhere, really. But I cool. want to hear, like hear as much details about your career. However, yeah. we, we're going to tip, tip and turn. We have so, a little bit of time, but it does. Once you get lost, it goes. So. Yeah, and I can, I can ramble endlessly because I got endless stories to tell. So anyway. <laughs> So anyway, um, so I've been doing that. So so I, I did that for a number of years, and I make pretty good money uh, because on top of everything else, I have multiple sclerosis. 
so yeah. that happened in 2004. So I've been um, in a in a good state like that because I've had um, good insurance and I've been you know, good doctors and everything. So we'll um, we'll catch we'll touch on that. But okay. So this was a perfect job for me because it wasn't too demanding and and so forth and so on. But I go, you know, I want something more. I want to get involved in some more stuff. I want to want to expand my horizons and and by a fortune fortune not fortune <laughs> fortune i grew up in this area so i knew a lot of people that were currently like when i was a little kid now they're like vps of studios and things like that because they yeah. stayed into it right. a lot of kids i grew up with were they either were in aviation because los angeles before well it's always been hollywood but the biggest industry in los angeles was aviation or it got chased out by, you know, states like Texas and Arizona and all that kind of stuff. So there was a huge, huge aviation community here. And Hollywood was something I thought about kind of an afterthought. So um, anyway, but the, uh, it, so I, I, I wanted to um, get more involved. And the airline industry hadn't recovered in this time period. It took years and years and years. So, I started to say, let's, yeah, I'm going to start using my, my, my abilities to influence and schmooze and all that kind of stuff. So I do a lot of uh, uh, mixers and things like that, and stupid red carpet events that weren't, didn't mean anything, but it got you some auditions and got you some stuff. So then I started auditioning and I started getting parts, and I, you know, very specific things or like uh, doctor, lawyer, um, you know, uh, can't even think of the names of these shows anymore, but uh, uh, God, my brain is. What uh, about but, uh, <laughs> what about Twin Peaks? So is that part of Twin that? Twin Peaks? Yeah, it was a good one. It was one episode. Uh, I was a um, board member of this insurance company, and uh, the whole episode's in that insurance company, and it's um, you got Tom Sizemore sitting right next to me. Wow, he's. He's intense as it is, right? <laughs> and and uh, and uh, yeah, and yeah, it was it was wonderful. It was uh, it was a good experience. I think I paid good money, but it, I had done um, other things like um, oh gosh, um, I was getting this is digging in my my cobwebs now. I haven't done any of that kind of work now in oh, probably six or seven years. Well, you've been focusing like, on producing, so yeah, yeah, so. So yeah, and I had all these ideas, and I and I started looking at aviation shows, and there wasn't anything about the airline industry. So I said, really, ah, I think I'll take my knowledge of airline industry, my passion for mm -hmm. film, and and in the meantime, when I was doing all this uh, extra work, I would stay. I wouldn't stay with the extras. I bet I go on set and watch them rehearse, and I watch all the people do different things. So the director, right. the light guys, this and that, the gaff, the grips, everything. Yeah, people and don't know what an what a um, education being an extra is. Exactly what it was. It was a. I was able to educate. I was like free college. I was getting paid for. It. Yeah, we and, can make our we can make our own films now because of it. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Like I know the camera angles. I can. I can be like, hey, people, are, you look up their freaking <laughs> nostrils, right? You're like, jeez, man. <laughs> you want to tell them something? But anyway, so yeah, so that was that was the. Um, the gist of it and then i met this so anyway i was having some um some physical stuff and i started to get into spiritual things because of people i was dating or whatever and um um i was kind of kicking and screaming yeah that's that's a bunch of bs blah, blah, blah. and lo and behold i started to go to like sound bass where i met you and i got reiki and i got all these things and i said Ooh, I feel pretty good. It's pretty good. And it's clear in my mind because there was like, it's going through all this midlife crisis stuff, you know, and I was like, do I really want to be an actor? I'm like, that's not, and then I started to talk to people that are producers. And they go, nah, it, unless you're like, um, you know, Adam Sandler or something, it's great. But if you're not, it's a tough, tough life. You're always having to find a job. It's always, it's like, so one day, and this I have, I have my dad knows Larry David. So I love Larry I, David. I see Larry David frequently. Not, I mean, not every. I had since the pandemic, I haven't seen very much of him at all. Right. Uh, so I am Sandler a couple times in a few weeks. Oh, last couple cool. weeks. 
he's been yeah he goes to places I go so yeah. uh, I've run into him a couple times but um, no Larry and Dave I haven't seen in a while but uh, uh, it's a golf course my dad is a member of so I, I have access to it I guess and um, uh, one day I just happened to have lunch on the same table when we were just sitting there and I said oh, what was your secret he goes I'm like you I was an actor I wasn't a very good actor and somebody said why don't you guys produce something? And I, and I was looking for a place to sleep in Manhattan where I put my box, you know, with the homeless guys. That's because <laughs> the story in Seinfeld, when he's that whole pilot thing is true. And George is him. So um, it's basically, it's an it's a autobiographical thing for him. So he said, yeah, that was, that was the turning point. He said that, that whole, the whole Seinfeld thing made his entire fortune from it. Wow. And he's, I think he's a billionaire now as a result and, and everything else. So it goes to, it, it, he was in the same exact, maybe in a little better place, but in different, same circumstances I, I found myself in. Oh. And the, um, the bottom line was, I said to myself, I really like this spiritual stuff. I met this girl who was a healer. She was a producer. So she claimed, um, everybody's a producer in this town so anyway she had a few creds she had a few creds i do a little background i check imdb and stuff so anyway so i eh, i go well, okay so i really like this holistic stuff i i started to look at all like reality shows and everything and there was nothing like that the only there's now a show on i think it's tnt it's like love island or something like i don't know the name of it i can't remember but it's a holistic healing show hmm. you might know i don't i don't watch a lot of tv so um, but anyway, um, I yeah, thought, I remember gee, that one. That was I, I knew you when you were producing it, and I loved the concept. I was behind the it. Hollywood Healer is what it was called. Yeah, because ho celebrities in Hollywood hire. She was a girl that would go to people's houses and do Reiki and all kinds of stuff and cleanse their house and whatever. And um, I go, that's a good premise for a TV show, a reality show. We could we could take the cameras to all these people's houses. And we can have sound baths, and we can have we can talk to we can go on our crystal adventures and go it's to Bali. Still and all a good things. show. <laughs> still a good. I'm show. gonna do it. I'm going to do it. Now that I know the world, now I know a little bit more of what's going on. It helps a lot. I, mean, I, I was, I wasn't ready for the wolves quite then. So, um, I had the show sold to a all, all three America, and all three America's production company that does the uh, uh, undercover boss. Okay. So everything was on the up and up for that. Unfortunately, this woman, her, her um, personality was very large, let's put it that way. And she rubbed these guys the wrong way, these producers. Aww. And they were going to take the show. And that was it. They said, goodbye. Well, if they, can't, if they can't like her, how is the audience going to like her? Is exactly. She, they said she just wasn't authentic enough. And, wow. and dumb me, I had some money put away by then. I kept spending money. Oh, we can make this better. We can, And I, I kind of knew that was a rabbit hole. So I sort of just uh, threw my hands up in the air and said, oh, screw it. And I, and I went back to doing the extra work for a while. So anyway, lo and behold, about three <laughs> years ago, I, about three years ago, I get this phone call. And I'm in Denver. It's snowing. I'm driving on the freeway. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And this friend of mine I had met through trying to pitch the Healer show to said, you know, I'm now partners with William Shatner. And we're developing a production company. And we'd be very interested in your airline concept. Because I had talked about it eat me on the phone or something. Who knows? And um, the... Um, the guy said, well, if you guys could develop a you know, sizzle reel, and, da, 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 da. and I thought about that. I go, God, I've, I've spent so much money on this other thing. That's the last thing I want to do. And um, they said, no, no, you, I can't Bill Shatner take a look at this because we're working with him on some other projects. And I, Bill Shatner, to me, is like the king of voice, you know, of, of you know, the voiceover, you know, uh, James Earl Jones and those kind of people. I mean, they're, they're yeah. What an epic voice he has! Epic. Right, 
Right. And he loves planes. I, I thought to myself, God, Captain Kirk, man, that would be pretty cool. Captain Kirk doing my show. Yeah. I can't talk too much about it, so I got to keep my mouth shut. But um, <laughs> the. Uh, Sounds good. I mean, there's there's millions of people on this this live broadcast, <laughs> I see. So. Well, let's get recorded, hope, so eventually there might be. You don't know. I hope you're enjoying it, everybody. Uh, you know, I hope so. Jenny said oh. hi. Mark cool. said hi. Tara said hi. Right. Yeah, a lot of people. <laughs> Part of my um, drinking here. I'm, uh, I'm having a drinking problem. <laughs> Why don't you, I mean, just because I have it up here, you want me to show a clip of your movie that you did? Yeah, that? yeah. So let me give you, a, let me give, it's like, you know, it's like, um, it's like the, the late show here. Um, <laughs> let me give you a little background on the, on the clip you're going to see, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it is a, so about three years ago, it's all everything happened like three years ago. This must have been a, karmic shift something going on and um there was an audition notice in la casting or something and they, they wanted a mercenary kind of beat up has been mercenary guy in his you know 50s and <laughs> um and so uh, and with a missing finger and see i got a missing finger here so um anyway, i have lots of you know, well, it's a disability. I mean, ah! <laughs> <laughs> it has its it has its advantages. But anyway, um, so so anyway, I, I I submitted for this thing and they called me in. And I got that part, and what you're going to see here is Merc the Mercenary, and the film is a Chinese film. It's about twelve million dollar budget, and it's called um, Laura. <laughs> Jennifer, Jennifer, I can't even think of the damn name anymore. Oh, <laughs> All I know it's is UFO. It's UFO Hunter. I know that much. Right. But Jennifer something, the UFO Hunter. Just, <laughs> anyway, because of COVID, it got, it got kind of shelved for now. And it should have been a theatrical release. So we're, we're hoping that something will come about. But you're going to watch me just looking for the UFO. And I this is the... I Jessica to... York is her name. Jessica, Jessica York. York. Okay. The UFO hunter. Okay, I have to turn it like this because. Um, oh, I my, see. Cause Old it's... school. On Instagram, that, that's what it. All right, I got ready. All right. <laughs> okay. If... And uh, yeah, I have a bulletproof vest on me. I know I'm a little heavy set, but I'm not that heavy set. But oh. the girl's so hot that I don't. I mean, it's just a, you know what happens when you see. That. <laughs> <laughs> this was shot out near Las Vegas. Oh, cool. We're supposed to be in Area 51. <laughs> I can't even get up the hill. I'm like... Here a week. We could have landed here. They would have found it already. There it is. Wait, What? <laughs> So five kilometers west. Right. What? <laughs> Where exactly is that in miles? It's supposed to be a spoof on Tomb Raider. Oh, okay. I can see that. Yeah. She's supposed to be Laura Croft kind of thing. She's sassy. Huh? She's sassy. Yeah, she's real. Yeah, she's a biatch. <laughs> she's very nice in real life. That's good. No, feeding a goat at the petting zoo is my There's name. my finger. <laughs> That's what they wanted. Yeah. The boy and the girl. I like the lighting. Oh, yeah, and that was great cinematographer. The, I like the I had a pebble in my shoe. I had a pebble, pebble in my shoe, so I was really in pain while I was doing this. Yeah. Aww. I stubbed my toe. Okay, see you. Stay close. Cool, okay. <laughs> Under no circumstances are you to show any kind of aggression. Look like a whale on the beach there. No, stop it. Wow. That was a that was a nine hundred dollar phone. <laughs> that was oh definitely a sign of aggression. 
There it is. Dum 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 dum. Cool uh, design. This is the big budget part here. I like. It. Put it down. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Pat. No part two for me. She goes after her, though. Oh, that was it. It got you? Yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, oh, that was one. Yeah, no no sequel for me. Oh, shoot. Well, that's cool. You're in a good good portion of that anyway. Yeah, I mean, I got paid like, I don't know, 10 grand or something. That wasn't bad. Wow. Yeah. Just, just for hanging out three, in the desert. It was about three days in the desert, and I had to do a couple of VO stuff, back, you know, AOR, voiceover stuff on the, in the studio. But, yeah. yeah. It's pretty good. Hi, Fred. Fred says hi, too. Hi, Fred. <laughs> Fred's cool. Fred's an, I, uh, an IOTC member. I always mention Fred in the show. <laughs> Where is Fred, Fred tonight? Where is Fred? He's, at, I, he's, at, he's here. I think he's in L.A. with you. He's here. Oh, you're in New York. I know, but I feel like I'm in L.A. when I'm with you, Patrick. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. Yeah, I, we, we're missing one member of the family, unfortunately. Oh, please. God bless. Yeah. She's still in here. Uh, she's, uh, she's in here. She's all around this room. We're talking she, uh, about uh, Patrick's cat that recently passed. But don't don't switch subjects, Patrick. I'm going to get upset. <laughs> Well, I'll just I'm just gonna say really quickly. Um, Seventeen years, um, she was a, a different kind of cat. I mean, I think I think you, Stina, will know. Yeah, she was awesome. That was a weird. That was a that was a person in that body, cat body. She was so cute, honey. Yeah, and she died very respectfully and peacefully here in bed, in her own bed. And mm -hmm. I didn't have to traumatize her or anything like that because I I, I always. You know, when those kind of times come, and they do, um, uh, the last thing I wanted to do, I want them to go in peace, but I also want them to be happy and at home. Right. Uh, and that's not always possible, of course. But uh, in this particular circumstance, it, it worked out. And it was it was a beautiful thing. And, and the last day, um, she, you know, she really couldn't, she had got cancer. So, um, but she woke up and looked at the sunrise and looked at me and basically was gave me the message and then I gone out for something and came home and she had been passed away and but in bed and you know comfortable not traumatized so I, I, I felt that that was a Important. good thing I mean I wish I wish it would didn't happen but you know 17 years old so it was pretty old for cat lucky yeah I miss honey. Speaking of cat, one of my cats wants to get out of this room. Go I want to see. I want to see your cat. There's one. One of many. This is Starbuck. Hello, Star. Say hi. Oh, hello, kitty, kitty. She's a How you doing? She wants to go to the bathroom. Think, my star's out. Did my you star. hear about this? See, somebody. Mama. Somebody came. <laughs> and now, now they all want to come in. Let me shut this one. Too much. Uh, somebody so, came. On. I hear you. Somebody I came. Okay. Uh, somebody came up with an app to speak to cats. Did you hear about this thing? Really? No. Yeah, I was trying to do some research before uh, we had our call here. And uh, I heard about this. Uh, I think I was just trying a news feed from one of the, one of the uh, uh, Facebook or something. But um, somebody has come up with a <clears throat> an algorithm uh, that if your cat meows, this you put the phone up, it will translate. Get for, out of here. Yeah. I need to get and what's that. really weird, and you can find a video that's on YouTube somewhere, and a lady talks through it, and it then it t it meows, takes her words, and meows, but then there her cat was in the room with her, and when she did that, it came right up and just like tried to kill her. Wow. It was crazy. That is it was weird. You gotta see. Yeah, it's a really weird thing. I'm really curious about that. I want to. I want to see that in action. <laughs> whoa it's like i don't so, want you to talk to me <laughs> well it was like she she talked into the phone you know like you use a translator right 
Yeah. And she talked on the phone for Chinese or whatever it is. And then you talk on the phone and it, instead of like translating Spanish or whatever it is, here we go, meow, 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 right? And, yeah. and then damn, she'd play it for the cat and the cat just came up and like wanted to kill her. Wow. Like, I mean, she doesn't know what, you know exactly I'm gonna what I'm going to look that said. up. That's weird. Yeah. I figured you would really kind of get into that. Yeah, one. no, I mean, I would love to try it with the nicest one out there, I guess. But, but wouldn't um, that wouldn't that be wouldn't that be great if somebody really did come up with that and it really worked? Like the dog, did you know, you, you could talk to your dog or your cat? Well, why not? I mean, we talk to the lady in the kitchen or you know, in our Alexa or whoever, you know. Well, yeah, but just just it's it's like that would be. I don't, That'd be crazy I, hear, technology. I don't know if I want to hear what the cat dog said about me. Right. Fred said bad translation. Exactly. That's Shut the is. fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You see me naked every day. Don't say that. You know, like, you know, can you imagine? <laughs> feed me, bitch. No, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, feed me. Give me a, give me, go give me a girlfriend or boyfriend or something. What the hell, what's wrong with well, you? They, well, it depends on the house. Neuter me, but, spade um, me. Come on. What the hell, <laughs> man? John, they don't want to be neutered, probably. Um, no. So um, you were on topic with uh, an enlightenment experience before that I would like to hear more about, if you can share. In in what way? You said MS. So, okay. I mean, do you have like spiritual remembrings of like an awakening of some sort of, of knowing that having hope or something like that? No, what gives me hope is having a project, something to do, mission. So anyway, when I got MS, I'm just watching the time. So uh, oh, when I got, I, when I it got tells MS, us it'll say one minute left or whatever. Boop, 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 <laughs> yeah, it literally wow. kicks you off after an hour. Freaking TV <laughs> thing goes boom. Does, um, you just go like. So anyway, um, in 2004, I had gone through this this very. Um, I used to work for an airline in Florida, and I wound up in a huge whistleblower suit against them and uh, it was owned by Lou Pearlman you know who Lou Pearlman is why does that sound familiar Backstreet Boys Britney Spears oh, okay. the manager the guy that went yes. to jail for ripping him off okay yes 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 he died in jail they killed him in jail uh, yeah it was like it was like the Weinstein kind of guy you know it was like that yeah yeah um big heavy guy and I worked for him in Florida and he was running this airline and um, myself and a number of other people worked there. We, we were actually doing, we, this airline was a run down rinky dinky thing. And we started to whip it into shape, right? And get it making, was making money and mm -hmm. people can believe it. And Lou Pearlman wanted this airline to lose money on purpose because it was a way how he scammed people. Oh. And myself and the management team got involved in this whole uh, whistleblower thing. It's all over. I have news articles. I went to Washington, Congress, Capitol Hill, the whole nine yards because the airlines are involved in federal government stuff. And they were there were flight attendants who were part of Al Qaeda and all kinds. Of, it was just a big mess. But moving on from that, so so the stress of all that, I think, created or caused the MS to. to to show its ugly face in 2004. And um, yeah, there were several things. And uh, the, uh, anyway, so I got MS and it, I woke up, I was one day I went to sleep and everything was fine. And the next morning I woke up completely blind. Wow. Huh? Blind. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I was fighting Ooh. with a girlfriend or whatever and, and uh, I thought maybe she'd put something in my eyes or something, you know, so it's freaking <laughs> right, the F else? out. Yeah. yeah, freaking out. And uh, <clears throat> I called my dad. At the time, my dad was the, was the medical director of Cedar sinai Hospital in Los Angeles. So he was the cat, you know, he, I could get anything, any doctor, would, you know, any service I need. So yeah. I got, he said, well, you better get on a plane, fly out here, yada, yada, and find out what's wrong. I uh, got out here and... And this is in 2004. And then, um, so anyway, he took me to a retina specialist because, you know, for my eyes. 
And it took about five minutes and retina specialist came, took him in the room and said, your son's got uh, multiple sclerosis. And then they confirmed it with a spinal tap the next day. Wow. So there I go. I got multiple sclerosis, which is a fatal disease. But life is a fatal disease, isn't it? I mean, so anyway, yeah. I, that whole thing was quite shocking. And uh, I, I was eligible for all kinds of disability and prescriptions and whatever. Because, yeah, there's two things the federal government will, will take care of for you, pretty much, is being blind and having MS or wow. Parkinson's or Parkinson's. Wow. So that wasn't very good news. Yeah. And so I was freaking out. I didn't know what to do, where to turn. I started to go to these support groups, and that was the last I ever went to one. I was just like, are you kidding me? Is that I'm going to be in a wheelchair? I'm going to be good. I'm, I'm, no, I don't. That's not. I would rather die than be, do that. Oh, Sorry. Yeah. No, my cousin is, right? is in a wheelchair, and I feel so sad for her all the time. But she's strong, and, and she has the will. Right, so. right. But, so but anyway, it's sad that she can't speak. Yeah, she. It's hard for her to speak, and it's just like woof. But she's yeah. I still has high spirits, you know. I mean, you know, but, I can sing, I can dance. But I can, you have I can, to, I'm not, if you have I'm it, not you a wheelchair, lose. ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I'm not. You look great, it, but, Patrick. You look yeah, great. Yeah, thanks. And yeah, I'm 57 years old. I mean, I got all my hair. I mean, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> nice. You know, got yeah. peach fuzz skin. You know, I don't know what happened there, but anyway, so. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I learned to just block this out of my mind. I don't even tell people about it or anything. I try not to make them feel sorry because they, they totally give you a different attitude when you tell them that. And, uh, you know, I, I tell them that sometimes just because I want them to realize I'm, I'm doing a lot better than most people. A lot of people that get MS don't do so well. And that's because of marijuana. Yes. Advocate. Absolutely. 100%. And uh, something called, uh, there's been a lot of drugs that have come on the market. And I was fortunate because if I had gotten it any earlier, there would have been very little that you could do about it. And uh, the government provides this, this drug. It costs fifty, costs $5,000 a month oh my God. just for one, one prescription. They cover the expense of it. So it's really important to have, you know, socialized kind of medicine. I wouldn't say 100%, but what I've got through the government's very make Medicare, I guess. And that's really good because, you know, I, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be in the position I'd be in right now. So I very appreciative of that. And, um, and, but what gives me hope is that I love to create. So creating this thing that I know this industry, like no one else does, and I know a little bit about producing, but I also know a little bit about finding the right people, the right director, the right music person, you know, because I so I, I went on this quest. I just want to watch the clock. Or, Don't worry. I'll, I'll tell you. Trust me. I'm always on I know time. you will. I know you will. <laughs> but I want to catch this again as much as I can. So anyway, <laughs> yeah. uh, we may have to do this again, part two. Um, so anyway. <laughs> Once the project comes out, I mean, you can talk about God it. Is, since I started getting spiritual and everything, I started to see things and, and, and I started to believe in things I didn't believe in before. You know, when the cat died, her, her ghost, I mean, I never saw a ghost before, but it, it, it appeared in, in this, the sheets in this bed. They're very, they're kind of velvety. I think, you know, the kind of sheet had. It's really, yeah. It's kind of like a flannel. Mm -hmm. And then um, the other day I took a video of the cat in a, in a, in the, as a, uh, um, I saw it. I was saw crazy. It, right? it was a cat. There was yeah. a cat shadow on your wall. It was, it was Honey was the Cat. It was shadow. looked like Honey the Cat. It was there. Oh, you know, you know, I believe in. I'm very open to the universe. I know you do. And, I know uh, you do. So, but I didn't. Yeah. I didn't. So, um, and then everything fell in place. The Bill Shatner thing fell in place. And this is a guy I always admired. You know, I'm a Trekkie, but I never say it in our meetings or anything. I, guess I try <laughs> to play it very exactly. <laughs> And here's, here's Captain Kirk. He's in Christ. He's 90 years old. You know that? Wow. 90. He looks great. He's, yeah. he's fine. So I'm like, you know, all that stuff. And then we, so I created 26 episodes of this show. And he just loved it. And he loves me. And we signed a contract about six months ago. Congrats. For two years development uh, with him um, now uh, under his company. 
Nice. Shatner yeah. Universe, right? Yes. Yes. And, uh, and there's a website. And it's just sort of a, there's not a lot there because we have a lot, everything we have is under in development. And there's about a dozen shows also, not just mine. So he's, he's now producing his own material. And so that's where we're at with that. So that yeah. so we do have a few minutes left. This is where I say this. Uh, where would you like people to follow you and your projects? Oh, I don't know. Facebook, Instagram, Patrick Weil Seven. On Instagram. On Instagram. Yeah, that's probably the best place. Okay. Um, you know, take a look at IMDb. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. I'm all choked up, man. You're like making me nervous. It's okay. Be? It's okay. Air hugs. So anyway, <laughs> air, did you say air hug? I like that. It, uh, ma matrix COVID hugs. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of it. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm really. I, you know, I take care of my 90 year old dad. You know, I basically do that because your he's, dad's he's, the best. I drive him. I take him to eat every day. And oh. Just take care of him, and he takes care of me in some ways. So it's a nice. It's a nice arrangement. And it gives me time to get this whole thing going, and we, we're, we're making lots of progress. And I figure by this time next year, we should be on a major network. So, um, you know, either. Um, well, I'd love to have Google. you back then, you know, whenever, because, you know, time will pass, and then you, before you know it, you'll yeah. be back, you know. Yeah, so I mean, we're hopeful for History Channel and Discovery and all those. That's who we're in, involved well, in. Well, a project like this hasn't been made yet, and it needs to happen, so. Yeah, and it's a perfect time because the airline industry really need all the PR they can get right now to get people back in the, in traveling. It's because, you know, we're all going to go back to traveling after the vaccine has got the herd mentality. I mean, the herd uh, right. immunity right. going. So, yeah. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm looking forward and all your other uh, ma magical projects to follow. Thank you, P. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, and I'm working on one called uh, uh, Waterworks. Yeah, which is all about which is all about the world of the pipes underneath the ground that nobody knows about that whole. Oh, you didn't say this. World. I didn't know. Yeah, that and uh, uh, living rock legend, living music legends with uh, like different people, like from the Doors and people like that. And that we're collaborating with Bill Shatner on that one, especially. Oh, you saved this stuff for the last minute. <laughs> hey, that, you know, hey, you gotta keep you gotta keep the audience riveted. But water is life, so I want to see waterworks and the music as well. Well, yeah, you sit there and you flush the toilet. Where the hell does that go? And you follow it all the way to the ocean. Basically. And also about but what it, we're the drinking. I mean, the fountains and everything. Exactly, but there's a whole universe under the ground that we just have no concept of, and that's and all over the world. Not like waterworks in Rome. The waterworks in New York City. You know, it's the just whole world. Mind like in the middle of the world, there's this water pump. <laughs> Each episode's got like we're traveling, we're in Moscow, we're in, you know what I mean, Paris. It's really interesting. Great. So we can, so why don't you you'll here promote, right now. <laughs> promote it on your Instagram and we'll come and see it. A Hollywood healer or, or the heartbreak healer, one of those will be next probably. I think it's once, once we make a little mark here, then we'll be able to do a lot easier. I would just call up Guy. I mean, he's the most interesting person I knew at that time. Anyway. Guy, and uh, yeah, but I, I think we're going to do like, different people all the time. I rather than just one oh, person being a host. That's a good idea. And spotlighting, yeah. that's cool. And I may actually have celebrities to do it with. And then uh and then we also have um um uh Dennis Quaid is, is a good friend. So he, he nice. may be involved in some other projects too. Nice. Bring Larry David yeah. on. <laughs> Larry David nah, probably not him, but <laughs> Dennis Quaid's pretty cool. I like Dennis. He's he's a pilot also. So Oh, I didn't he, know that. He has his own jet. Oh, so you have to bring him then, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, say hi to all your celebrity friends from MP and. Uh, well, it sounds a lot. It sounds like I, I rub elbows with them, but no, it's just I live in a neighborhood that just seems to have a lot of them in it. Well, it's, hey, what, whatever the connection you is. You see them at the store. You see them at McDonald's. You know that kind of stuff. That, that's what they really are. They're just They're like people? everybody else. Oh my god! They're just like. <laughs> Wow. How are you doing on time? I, it's going to cut us off in, in, a, in a little bit. But, Hot minute. Um, you have any All last right. words for the uh, viewers here? God, save us. No, I'm, no. Um, listen, don't be depressed. Things are going to get back to normal, everybody. And um, 
pandemic will go away and we'll get back to normal and you know hopefully uh, everybody will be happy and peaceful and loving and, and get back to that spiritual this all started because actually uh, everybody broke up and we couldn't do our shit anymore yeah yes blessings and prayers pay okay? Namaste. I love you. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you for coming on our home. <laughs> it was wonderful. This was very pleasant. I enjoyed yeah, it. It was. Part of so, my drinking every day. I have this drinking problem. Enjoy it. And I'll see you right. soon. Okay. Come back soon. Okay, New York. See you later. Bye -bye. Peace. Love you, Pay. Talk Bye. to you. Bye bye. Bye. So that was Patrick Weil. Um, spiritual and producer and the actor you know my favorite kind of people so tune in next week we have a really special guest thank you Pay. we have a really special guest next week as well in entertainment and patrick you're awesome thank you and thank you everyone for joining love and blessings stay safe stay positive and stay together you know not physically but yeah emotionally energetically whatever love blessings <laughs>